And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, Breaking the Fourth Wall, presented by Comics Remix, episode 55. We have that sound effect, you know. Yeah, I just did it three times. Okay, but I mean, there's actually... I just saved you some editing. There is no editing, because I, I don't put an effect in here. It's like an original Star Trek sound Right, seriously. Wait a minute, if you have the effect, why don't you ever put it in? Because there is no effect. The effect is in the intro video. Oh, yeah, that's right. Man, no, I, I put the effect in the lockup. That's different. Cause there is I know no you want my undivided lockup. attention, and you have it. I am your host, Bigby Brian Adams. As always, this is Junior, who don't know what the hell he's doing or what show we're on. <laughs> and we Dude, I'm like, again. I like, I want to go buy toys. We're joined again by the book. <laughs> you know, it's, Junior's just going to trash this whole show so we can get the mic on. Yeah, <laughs> right? Like, like, let's just go. It's just like toys, toys. It's that, it was that interview we did for next week. And he brought up toys, and now you're just ruined. I, you know what? Honestly, I forgot about that. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I just, it was, just, it was taking, just a good interview. You were taking pictures of those yeah. Hot Wheels, and you got all excited about yeah. toys. But no, seriously, that was just a that was no, it was, it was excellent. great interview. Uh, next week will be posted um, with uh, indie creator from RI, RIA Comics, at, uh, Aaron Moore. So uh, look forward to that, guys. But let's get into let's do it. this week, Brian. Boom, this what week. What do we got? Suicide Squad. I know you love it. I'm going to the bathroom. I know. Don't go to the bathroom. <laughs> don't go to the bathroom. I mean, you could go to the bathroom. So apparently, I'm tired of every episode. Jared Leto has sent like weird presents to his co-stars, like gifts. Yeah. Okay. Like well, he I sent. I really uh, call them gifts. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if I call them gifts either. I mean, if you would call. I like, purposely stayed out of the comic book news this week. If you would call sending a so. dead hog to the set a gift, addressed to everybody. A dead hog. A dead hog. We're sending a rat to Margaret Robbie. Yeah. Yeah. And you bullies. think he's probably doing this to be like in character? That's, that's, that's what they're saying is that he's like trying to, you know. He's trying to, you know what, man? Look, I know there's going to be a lot of comparisons because yeah. that's just how it is. But you think it's his way of, you know, well, when uh, Heath Ledger prepared for the Joker, he was always in makeup. It was mm-hmm. 100% every second of the day he was the Joker. Heath Ledger did not exist anymore. Well, that's what they're saying about Jared Leto. Too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do you think that's what that's what he's going for yeah, here? They, that's they what they're he saying. He hasn't broke character in like months. But yeah, so <laughs> he sent Margot Robbie a love letter with a black box that had a rat in it, a I, live rat. I want to know what her response was. That would have been nice, but of course, you know, we don't get that. He that sent, he sent bullets to Will Smith. Yeah, he sent bullets to Will Smith. Damn, I like it. You. He's on See? point today. That's good. Yeah. I've done this some is, research. This is this is no, this is back. fine. I purposely did not read any comic news this week because I want to be genuinely, like, when we do this, like, So that's, wow. that's seriously the only Suicide Squad that it's No more Suicide Squad that just that little thing. I, I just, thought it was interesting. It is, but I, mean, I want to know. a dead hog. Like, I had to talk about that. I mean, that now, was it, like, one of those dead hogs that you buy at the market that you're ready to grill? Or was you it know just, what? like, they didn't st- went up to a farm, just stabbed it, put it in a truck, and delivered it, you know? That is not specified in the article I read. Just, quote-unquote, dead hog. I would like to know the responses. Oh, and it was accompanying a video message, but of course, you know... You don't get the video message. We don't get the video message. Yet. And... <laughs> Everything uh, ends up online at some oh, point. Yeah, it'll be in bonus features, if nothing yeah, else, right. on the DVD when it comes out. But they said that he was in full character... And then it blew them, blew them away. And that they realized at that point that this was real. And it was really... Like, I guess being on the set and making this movie for months now wasn't real enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... Moving on to another thing that we have brought up. Like, consecutively, I would say... I'm tired of talking about Convergence, if that's what it we, is. No, Convergence is over. Well, hey, I'm just... It's, it's the DCU! <laughs> okay, Soldier Boy. Uh, th- thank you for the. Now I get to tell Melissa where that came from because I had. She was like, "What's that from?" Like, I don't know. It's some rapper I couldn't remember. <laughs> yeah, remember Superman that you remember that song? No, no, no. It's not You're my, lucky. It's not. Am I lucky? You're very lucky. I've made a good life choice by not being a fan of Soldier Boy. Yeah, right on. I thought you said Superman that hoe. I was trying not to say that. Oh, That's right. why I said <laughs> Superman that, and I stayed quiet for a second. Thanks, yeah. book. Yeah, no problem. That's all I'm here for. Just to that's, that's why he's here. Demolish just, stuff. Just to mess stuff up. <laughs> he's here to screw it up. All right, let's go. Spider-Man, officially cast. Yes. It's over. Tom Holland. I did see that. Uh, I don't know who the kid is. He's got a very small amount of work done. I mean, he's been on some shows, some other stuff, maybe for like the past five years, really. Right. So, I mean, he's 18. That's a plus. This is I what, thought he was 16. Okay, good. He's, he's 18. Okay. Uh, it's it's kind of what I wanted. I mean, I wanted young. At least he's not 28, 30. 
playing a 15 year old. I could see somebody playing, I'm three years younger yeah, that's, as opposed that's, yeah. to. I mean, I know I have spoken before. I don't know if I said it, but I would find them to do Harry Potter. Like, yeah, get, yeah, like yeah. A, get like a 14 or 15 year old. But this is it's close enough. So my, my thing with Tom Holland is, obviously, before you get the acting, you get the look. What do mm-hmm. you think of the look of Tom Holland as Peter Parker? You know, I think I need to see him. And Peter Parker as, as Peter Parker. Okay. Like, right now, from the pictures I've seen, he looks like he could be in one direction. <laughs> <laughs> Which doesn't really bode well for me, because, you know, that's... You right, know, right. I don't think any of us are fans of one direction. I mean, you, you're I mean, questionable, maybe. <laughs> hey, junior. whatever, man. I realized I just said you. I could have just left that out there for interpretation. Yeah. But obviously, the book is unless he's like you know a closet boy band fan. Boy band fan, yeah. But I doubt that. You never know. Moving on, we got some Gotham news for season two. Okay. Gotham is going to be exploding with villains, according to the producers. Uh, apparently, Mister Freeze has been named in uh, season two synopsis. Uh, the Joker's going to be back. Um, if you actually watched the first season, you know that we've got to see Edward Nigma finally spiral out of control. And I didn't finish the end, so I didn't see him, the spiraling. But wait a minute. The Joker is going to be back? Oh, no, 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 no. Because no, that's no, what you no, said, no, didn't no, you? No, no, no. I said the did... Joker's coming. I never no, said... you said he's going to be back. Did I say he's yes. going to be back? Well, I didn't mean that. That's why well, I was like, wait a minute. Everyone's interpretation is that the little ginger kid was the Joker. Yeah. But I don't. I think it is, man. I don't buy and that if for it a is, second. If it isn't, it should be because that guy nailed the laugh. Yeah, he did. Really? He yeah, that guy. The Joker. Hey, he had a good laugh. Joker. Give him, give him the credit. It I don't was... want the, No, I will not give credit to the Joker. No ginger Joker for Brian. Hashtag Goker. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not having it. Not having once it again, all. setting trends. Yep. Um. You know, Mr. Freeze, man, that's a big one. But it, he's not going to be Mr. Freeze. It's oh, going to be Victor Freeze, I'm assuming. Like, you know, pre... It's, uh, it's uh, bluntly stated in the statement. Through. Yeah. Like, yeah you... Bluntly stated in the statement that Mr. Freeze and the Joker will play a role. Not, uh, I got, I just blanked on Mr. Freeze's name. Victor Freeze. Victor Freeze. Hmm. But Mr. Freeze. Hmm. And the Joker. Not that the Joker really had an alias to be in with. I right. hope they do have Nora too, and then it shows that as him. Yeah, it's got to be early point, versions. You know? I would. Uh, I can't see like the actual super villain uh, version being on the show because then it just kills what it is, in my opinion. And then also, uh, man, I just killed it. Now someone else was coming in there. Tigress. Oh yeah, it's the. Uh, is that they're right? using yeah they're using the girl that was in uh, Evil Dead, the black chick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think. That, It'd probably be all right, I think. Yeah, you know. It's going to be one of those characters like an Arrow when they used, uh, what's her name? I forgot. The chick that was his girlfriend for a while? Huntress. Okay. Like, yeah, that man. That doesn't really nail it down. <laughs> yeah, like, he's true. But, he's been dipping his stick in so many different ponds. It's, yeah, he's, he's pretty much hit every girl on that show. Seriously. He's seriously. had his arrow in a few different quivers. <laughs> for real. There you go. That, that was huh. an excellent pun, man. Thank you, thank you. Um, more comic book TV heroes. They released a trailer for Heroes Reborn. I'm not excited about that. Uh, I never finished. I never finished the first season. I went to Walmart right after Black Friday last year, mm-hmm. and they had all the seasons on Blu-ray for five bucks. And you bought them? I bought them all. Oh, I, I watched the first that season. Was a horrible and I started season two. Dude, twenty bucks for that was all a four bad seasons. Life choice. Bad life choice. Oh, get out of here! <laughs> when you watch season three and four, you will realize I heard, I heard. how much of a bad life choice it was purchasing. Yeah, I, I heard it went down pretty hard. Hard. It went down hard. Season one, two, epic television. Okay. Season three, four, really stinker, man. Hmm. It's the TNA of. And I don't TV. see. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it is the TNA. Of, it failed to make an impact. Nice. I see what you did there. Yeah. yeah. Um, it did not reach its destination in America. Definitely not. Or XL. Or XL. XL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like NBC, which I don't understand because they have Agents of Shield. Right. ABC has agents. Oh, that's of ABC. ABC owns Disney. Okay, my bad. So then I do understand why NBC is jumping on the comic book wagon. Yeah, then why do they anything. cancel Constantine? Because they suck. But yet they're going with heroes. Yeah. Uh, Get out of here. I know, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Constantine, that. You know what? We could spend five hours trying to discuss why, and we still wouldn't understand. But uh, so, I mean, it looks like it's going to be a completely new cast. 
for the most part. I mean, you've got some characters coming back. Hero will be back. Mohinder, Suresh, the Haitian, uh, our buddy with the glasses. I don't know. RH. What about that one R- guy that was actually... HRG, that's it. HRG. What about the one guy that actually got famous from that show? What was his name? Oh, uh, the, you know what? It's, it's really funny. Skyler. He plays Zachary Spock. Quinto. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's God. really funny that you brought that up because, I mean, we, we're pretty much done with the heroes, right? No one cares. Even yeah. if, like, I really like Hiro Nakamura, but not enough to want, come back and watch the show, even though I probably will anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, if nothing's on TV, I'll check it out. But, speaking of Zachary Quinto, he and Chris Pine have signed on for an additional fourth Star Trek movie, which is untitled. A fourth? Where's number three? Well, they're just starting production on it. Okay. It's Star Trek Beyond will be number three. Gotcha. So they have signed for a fourth. Does Batman make an appearance? Uh, <laughs> does Batman make an appearance? Yeah. In a Star Trek movie? I'm going by the title. Oh, ha ha. I see what you did there. I actually kind of like the Star Trek movies. Never was a fan of any of the TV shows, but the movie does seem pretty interesting. Uh, you know, they, they uh, that's awesome. Find stuff with Ace Spaceballs, the comb set, and it's a comb and a half rope. That's awesome. I, I need to buy that. That's one of my favorite scenes in Spaceballs. Yeah. Have you... We ain't found... That's awesome. But, uh, yeah, Star Trek movies, dude. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of Star Trek. Those new movies I come elevate the franchise, mm-hmm. dude. See, like, I personally was never a fan of the original Star Trek. Only I just never oh, like, got into it. Okay, Captain Kirk. Star yeah, Trek? like I just never got into it. But when the new movies came out, I was like, you know what? That looks good. I'm gonna see it. And I saw the first one in the theater. I was like, that blew my mind, and I became a fan. Like that me and my Quinto is like the perfect guy they could have picked for Spock too. Totally like, perfect. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Me and my grandfather watched the original Star Trek together. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I've watched it. I mean, I've watched um, it. It just the next generation was where I was hooked. And then I watched Deep Space Nine, and then that kind of died from there. They should bring Worf into the, the Star Trek movies. Seriously, why not? Yeah. Of course, he's next generation, so... Yeah, I know, but it would be And the Klingons cool. are kind of a-holes right now in the in the, the timeline. Well, they always were, except for him. Yeah, that, that's true. At least they were interesting a-holes. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, everybody's back for that movie. Big deal. Uh, which leads me into my next topic that apparently they're really close to signing Chris Pine to play Hal Jordan. Oh, okay, I'm thick. Oh, never mind. Okay, wow. Really? Mm-hmm. And apparently, instead of... The studio is saying that instead of going for a solo Green Lantern film, uh-huh. this looks like it's going to be more of an all-encompassing. Mm. They're saying that they're going to have... Uh, it'll be Hal Jordan, Guy Gardner, and Jon Stewart. Give, uh, give so like a Green the, Lantern core movie. Give Junior the yeah. news of who else is rumored to play. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, as as great as I would love to see, like, and and I really think like, with the epic failure that was Green Lantern, mm-hmm. they would be a great idea for them to do based on the core. But where everything becomes questionable is in the casting, and it was rumored. Yeah, this is terrible, dude. You're gonna. You, Sheamus, you'll be able to. You Sheamus be able is to gonna be Guy Gardner. Yeah, Sheamus is gonna. That would actually. <laughs> I would be down with Seamus being Guy Gardner. He's a little bit big, but I can dig it. Um, no. Major rumors have emerged that uh, Tyrese Gibson might be Jon Stewart. We talked about this. See, it was all just rumors before. Even he's like talking about yeah, it. Yeah, even like, he's talking about it. It's looking like it's going to happen. Remember I made that stupid sweet lady joke? Yeah, no, I do. Understand. I do. But I, I was just I saying, <laughs> along with the Green Lantern corpse possible movie, I don't want to see him. And we did talk about possible casting for him. Chris Pine would be great as Hal Jordan. I'm not sure who they should get for... Uh, Kyle. For Oh, they haven't said they'd put Rainer in there. Really? No. So Gardner. So what Gardner. So who would they get for Gardner? For Gardner, I'd almost want to see a veteran actor play Gardner. Just mm-hmm. to give him, like, make Gardner a little bit older than the rest of the guys and make him, like, the guy who's he's been around already. You know, right. he's put in his time. So, like, so instead of making him like a secondary replacement to Hal Jordan, you would want to make him someone that's possibly been around a l- long. Yeah, longer than Hal Jordan. So Hal is kind of like, do it the same way where Hal and Jordan are kind of like the new recruits, you know, and Guy's been Hal around. and Jordan? Uh, I mean, not Hal and Jordan, I'm <laughs> sorry. You mean Jordan Stewart? <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> where they're kind of the, the new recruits and Guy Gardner is kind of like, you know, hey, I've been around. I know, you know, what what's going on and stuff like that and. Kind of giving them the... Uh, I have no interest, honestly, in any Green Lantern movie. Like, I hope when he's in Justice League, it just shows him in the background, not even f- 
talking. I hate that character. <laughs> really? Yeah. Wow. I've never been in big into sci-fi. Man, Jeff I, Johns' Green Lantern run, awesome. I have that in that box, that trade box. Yeah. Green Lantern Rebirth, you need to read that. I got that all there in hardcover. It's amazing. That's, that's a very good story. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. It takes. It's one of those stories that takes every piece of major Green Lantern mythology and, just, and, and makes it all work. In six issues. Yeah. I'll have to take your word for it. That's really good. <laughs> that stroke's in it. He makes an appearance. I doubt that. Damn. <laughs> you had to try it, right? I was trying. You can't get me on that one. <laughs> you only got Deathstroke baseball caps at Spencer's, right? Yeah. Okay, just checking. Yeah, I think I sent you a photo. Yeah, you yeah. sent me a picture of that. Did you go ago. buy it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just checking. And then right after you sent me that, somebody sent me one of a belt that Spencer's had at Deathstroke, nice. too. But you can only get it online. Uh, did you order it? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on from the Green Lantern supposed of Corpse movie, George Barris sold the original Batmobile. I heard about that. Apparently, he has held on to it this whole time. and uh, The 66 version. The 66. The okay. original 66. It sold for, I believe it was $4.6 million. Wow. $4.6 million, dude. That is sick. Well, if I hit the lotto, I'd do it. No, I wouldn't, because I'd be like, yeah, I guess I'm going to buy three, three or four regular Batmobiles for that price. He or just uh, go buy a Tumblr. <clears throat> He originally bought the yeah totally right yeah. or the eighty or the Michael the eighty nine yeah, yeah the eighty nine it would be pimp those are the only ones I'd buy it'd be the sixty six and the eighty nine and then I'd have the animated one made that'd be pain in the butt to drive because <laughs> you're sitting all the way like in the trunk <laughs> but I I would totally pay to get that and I'd order I'd order, own a custom Ecto one and I'd own the turtle van Barris bought the car it was a Ford Futuro it was used in a movie. Uh, Let's see. I think the real news here is that a Ford sold for four point six million dollars. <laughs> <Yeah, serious. laughs> he bought it for fifty it was a fifty five Lincoln Futura. He bought it from Ford in sixty five for a buck. Wow. That's and then he amazing. transformed it into the Batmobile. Yeah, right. That's a hell of a profit market. Right, seriously. And then sixty seven years later, four point six million dollars. Well, I don't know. How much money is, did he put into it making it into the Batmobile? Or was that something that Warner Brothers paid for when they produced the show? Uh, you know, I'm not, uh, that actually does not say. 50 years ago, I can't imagine it would have been that much. Yeah, I can't imagine it would be that much, but uh, it's, they call it the most valuable car in the world now. I bet. So I think only, I think it tied with, uh, oh no, it's it, it was the highest selling. Um, How long before we see it in a museum? You know, I don't know. The, that's a big question. Does it say who bought it? Like if it was it's, somebody They actually have a picture of the people that bought it. Is he just a oh, Rick person? Champagne is the man's name. He's got who? Does it say who he is? Because I mean, that's for uh, just some guy. Oh, my name's Rick. You know, I got extra four point six million. I'm spending on a Batmobile. Yeah, seriously, I think he's. Uh, Here, I'll Google his name. Uh, see if it comes up. You know, it's all in the article, and I should have been more prepared for this, but I'm, I wasn't. But uh, I, it just, I'm just amazed that I'm, I'm expecting to see that. Wait, how much? Four point six. Four point six. There's an image here that says four point two. Really? Yeah. Oh, somebody, somebody's six. cheating taxes. Yeah, right? see? Seriously. <laughs> Look, 4.2 mil, it says. Wow, I got 4.6. Well, it's still over 4 it's million. It's still over 4 million, and it's still too much? He uh, he works in logistics. He's got a company called Champagne Logistics. It's a uh, transportation service. Wow. What if we'll be doing deliveries in the Batmobile? And it was auctioned at Barrett Jackson in Scottsdale, Arizona. Which, if you're a fan of Fast and Loud... Well, I know exactly yeah. what Barry Jackson was. Yeah. I expect to see that auction on Fast and Loud now. Get on that. What, I don't even know what, what network that shows on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The Learning Channel, maybe. Who knows? TLC, because you ain't learning nothing there. Ant-Man. I guess you got to stay through the end credits of Ant-Man, because there's going to be an end credit scene. There's two. Oh, there's two? There's two scenes. Oh. I, I, I did read that. There's two scenes, um, a mid-credit and an end credit. Um, they say one of them focuses on what's next for Ant-Man, and um, the other one is a Marvel, already established Marvel character, an Avenger, actually, showing up. Um, I think they said that's actually during the movie. Uh, an Avenger shows up. They don't say who, nor they don't say why the Avenger is there. You think that'll be a tie into Civil War? I, I'm Cause you know he's on, the, he's on the cast list for Civil I'm War. I'm guessing it's one of them trying to recruit him. Yeah. You know, that's that's I can see it being Tony Stark. Just being like, you know, hey, 
like going up to uh, Hank Pym or something. You know, like you've got this technology. You know, I like technology kind of deal. Let's, that would make sense to me. You know, I could see it being that. You don't think Fury. it would end up being like Nick Fury? <laughs> they said it's an Avenger. Uh, yeah, Nick Fury is not going to be uh, in Civil War. Yeah. That's oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. Previous show. I think you were here for that one. Yeah, I was. Uh, and more Ant-Man sense. news moving to the realm of comic books. Apparently, he's going to take a villainous turn after Secret Wars. Really? Possibly. Scott Lang. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised Hank Pym how many times has that happened before. Right. But it kind of, I kind of think it's funny that, you know, you've got this Ant-Man movie coming out, and it's about him being like a criminal, and he's trying to reform, and now you're going to put the character in the comic book, and you're going to do the opposite. It yeah. just, I don't know. That seems like a DC move to me. Destroying continuity. Yeah. Copyright pending. Seriously. We need to copyright that. I'm not really even excited about that book at all, honestly. Ant-Man. I mean, who wants to read it? Do you want to read Ant-Man? I don't want to read Ant-Man. I don't have time to read the stuff I want to read. It's uh, just uninteresting, period. What else we got? Dragon Ball Z. I'm sorry. Dragon Ball Super. Mm -hmm. Sunday, it will air in Japan, the first episode. There are uh, promos up online. I'm excited, dude. We're, first, we're not in Japan. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. <laughs> on, I, hey, you know what? I uh, am going to search out the international channel because when I originally got into Dragon Ball Z 15, 20 years ago, since it was never completed here, like Dragon Ball Z pretty much ended right before Frieza shows up for the big ending of battle. Mm -hmm. So you got like the first 50-something episodes. And then I found this channel called the International Channel, and they played Dragon Ball Z for an hour on Sunday nights, but it was not subbed. Mm. But we still... You got to see what was We'd have on. smoke outs and watch, which I'm hoping that they put Super on. Otherwise, I'm assuming next year, two years, but I'm excited. Somebody, yeah, I was saying, yeah, somebody will post it online. Brand new original Akira, Akira Toriyama. Yeah. Yeah, but this takes place after Dragon Ball Z, right? It not does. after Dragon Ball GT. Yeah, it, well, GT was not written by right, Toriyama. Right, so he's not kind So of they're not acknowledging it. Yeah. Even though, as a fan, I can tell you right now, they've already done things that... Like, I love Dragon Ball, so I'm willing to overlook some of the stupid things I feel like are going on. And the movie that they released last year, uh, Battle of the Gods, mm -hmm. they gave us a new form of Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan God. Which, in my opinion, is really comparable to what GT gave us towards the end with Super Saiyan 4. Many um, times to the monkey. Yeah. Where uh, it's it's just kind of like, uh, I mean, how far can you really go with this stuff? And, mm -hmm. But I'm still interested to see it. New Dragon Ball is better than no Dragon Ball. And it's got to be better than GT. Which will then bring me to our final thing. That I didn't think we were going to get to talk about this, but we got through everything pretty quick. Uh, the Southern Bastards variant, which is really... Just uh, very hot topic yeah, in America. Yeah, very, very right hot now. topic today. Not, not the comic itself, but what the comic cover represents. The, the, the Confederate flag. Yeah. So as we all knew, no thanks to this new shooting at this church, and I, I, I don't even know how they've tied the Confederate flag into this because. Well, he knows. He was telling me yesterday. Yeah, there was one picture of the guy that did it. With uh, he was sitting on the hood of his car, and his car had a state issued license plate with a rebel flag on it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. He didn't do it, you know, like draped in a rebel flag, shooting up, like nothing like that. And there's also a picture of him showing burning the American flag, you know, so it's not like a... I mean, he himself has said he wanted to do all this to start a race war. Yeah. But that's like, the Confederate flag hasn't meant what everybody's saying it is now, and, you know, since the KKK fell, pretty much. Like, now it's just people look at it like same as, like, Hispanic people from Mexico, you know, how I have their Mexican flag, you know, representing that's where they're from. Mm -hmm. Not that's... Same thing with the rebel flag now. Everybody in the South wears it as, you know, this is where I'm from, the South. Right. But people... Right, it's, it's more of like a... It's it's more of like a, a, a heritage thing than like a, a racist thing. Yeah, that's why you see the heritage, not hate thing anymore. Right. It's just, I mean, yeah, obviously there's still, you know, people out there that use that flag for that purpose, just like people still use the swastika, you know, for, you know, white supremacy. Right, which, which originally, not a lot of people know, was actually a Buddhist symbol. Yeah, yeah. So... Way to screw that up, Hitler. <laughs> so how do you feel about a comic called Southern Bastards doing a variant cover with a, a dog tearing up the, the Confederate flag saying death to the flag along with the South? Well, first of all, I don't think 
death of the flag will ever happen. If anything, all this has done is probably going to make it more popular. And I'm sure scalpers are hitting eBay like crazy right now, selling Dukes of Hazzard stuff. Oh, yeah, Dukes of Hazzard stuff <laughs> blowing up now. It's yeah. blowing up. Yeah. Where, you know, the thing about, like, anything like that, the more attention you put towards it, the way more popular it's going to get. This, the rebel flag will never be done in the South. It'll never happen. You might not have it on government buildings, which I'm a supporter of the rebel flag, but it shouldn't be on government buildings. Yeah. No. yeah <laughs> I mean, no. it makes no sense. It was a, a group of people that was uprised against the government. And right. So that part doesn't make any sense to me why it is on government buildings. But as far as like trying to ban it from other stuff, like the General Lee will no longer have the rebel flag on it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that is ridiculous. It's, yeah. it's part of the iconic, yeah. you know, imagery of, of the General Lee. And the thing, too, is everybody says that the rebel flag was, you know, the flag of the Confederacy, which isn't even true. The Confederacy had four flags. One of them was real short-lived. It was just a blue flag with one white star on it. That one disappeared quick. But there was three other ones, none of which was a rebel flag. The rebel flag was a battle flag, you know, and it was used after that, which was a minimal flag. And then the KKK, you know, picked up that flag and started, they ran with it. And that's why it gets all the hate now, I believe. But it's just, I'm sorry. Not the one. first time. But, uh, yeah, I just don't like that all the attention that's coming to it. Like, it's not, the flag's not going anywhere. Yeah, it's it's like I, like I was saying, and I know this is kind of like an off-subject off topic for a comic book show. But I felt like when they did the variant cover with it, well, I felt like I could bring it up. But it's like I had said to you on Facebook the other day. If they want to get rid of it, then they might as well get rid of the American flag too, because exactly. we have done just as yeah. just there's been just as many atrocities committed under the banner of the American flag as there has been the Confederate flag. If you want to look at it that way, well, it's not even like the American flag's done way more atrocities. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, you like, know, the South had slavery, which like, is bad, and they did bad things. We genocided the entire indians over here right. you know and mexicans like it's like that's comparable to nazis dude. yeah exactly so i mean it's just no gi joe's people yeah <laughs> it's uh this this all i feel like feeds back into the things we've been talking about since we've come back for this new season and there's too many people out there that are too easily offended by things they don't really even understand. Well, it's like that meme that I put on Facebook last night. It's like, well, if we're going to do away with everything from our childhood that offends people, now I put up the Ghostbusters emblem and says, <laughs> what do you mean, no ghost? Right. <laughs> you know? like, it's just it's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's man. ridiculous, man. We've entered an age where it's like very, you know, it's 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 almost like uh, it's it's locking down on any kind of creativity, you know. But and the thing is, too, is like you're stepping on other people's rights for something that you say is for another group of people's rights and I don't get how that works you know like if, and I don't know I don't want to get into it this <laughs> episode has taken a very it's, political it's, it's turn become, yeah. it's become a different show yeah. is what it has but no I completely understand what you're saying all um, I gotta say is leave the flag on generally seriously why it's an iconic car man why, yeah. why do that to the generally I mean didn't the, the actual quote unquote generally have bad enough rep as it was you remember when people lost their mind whenever they made that uh, that Dukes of Hazzard movie with Johnny Knoxville? And, that movie sucked. Well, at the beginning of it, the General Lee didn't have the flag on it, and people were flipping out like people that didn't even watch the movie. Yeah. If, obviously, if you watch the movie, you know it ends up on there. But yeah, like whenever it was released in theater, people were like freaking out when they'd see pictures of the car and they didn't have it on. It. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the mm-hmm. reason they got added on later on it was part of the sto- the movie story, yeah, yeah. you know. Well, yeah, it did. Cooter in the movie mm-hmm. ended up putting it on there. Yeah. The, Good old Cooter. Yeah. Speaking of Cooter, man, <laughs> he's not doing away with the flag. I don't. I, I really. I think it's a stupid thing to, uh, you know, it's a stupid thing to latch onto. I think any time any of these atrocities happen in this country, they always find the stupidest thing to latch onto, and they never want to blame it on a person. You know. If you're gonna do away with racist stuff anyway, I should probably start with the movie Dumbo. In my opinion, <laughs> <laughs> probably one of the most racist movies ever made. <laughs> Racism, unfortunately, will never die in America. No. Yeah, no, it's 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 too profitable, I think. And it'll always be represented in everything pop culture, one way or another. In this case, point bringing us back to comics and the Southern Bastard variant mm-hmm. cover. So, but uh, so that's that's pretty much all I've got for this week. Mm-hmm. Check out the JDF versus CM Punk uh, petition at Change.org. Click the link at the bottom of the description. Make sure you guys sign it. If you don't want to sign it, share it at the very least. 
you know, it's not about just seeing the fight. It's about helping us get our name out there and supporting us as a brand and as a friend if, you, if you're if you actually friends of either myself or Brian. Um, so please do that. Um, follow us on social media. We're on Facebook.com slash Comics Remixed. At Twitter, or at Comics Remixed on Twitter, at The Spinner Rack on Twitter. You can email myself, Brian, or Alex. Uh, just use our first names, at ComicsRemix.com. Uh, catch the videos on YouTube if you're not already. Um, next week, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, we have an interview with indie creator from RIA Comics, Aaron Moore. Aaron comes by, or, or phones in, I should say, uh, to talk about his uh his main three books that are out right now. So it was a very, very good interview. I really enjoyed it. very that. interesting stuff, man. I yeah. look forward to seeing more from him. Dude, the, for sure. Yeah, I, I don't even want to say it because I don't want to spoil it. But. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll say it. They can listen next week. Yeah, so um, tune in next week. That's what we got in store for you. Absolutely. Oh, and speaking of more banned things, Joker, Batgirl variant cover t-shirts, go buy them. Yes. Yeah. I, feel like... I don't know who the company that makes those just got a free plug. Yeah, welcome. the uh, the 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 band Joker, like you just said, the band Joker Batgirl cover that DC decided to ixnay is now printed on a T shirt. Yeah. So. What's going on with that cover y'all were talking about last time I was here? The one with Galactus and Silver Surfer in the bottom. Nothing. What was that I about? I oh, just, it's, it was just the variant cover. Yeah. That's just the one they're actually going to use. It? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For now. That's awesome. Yeah. Right now, I haven't heard anything about being canceled, so maybe when we come back in mm-hmm. two weeks to talk more comic stuff, it's. You Check know, out uh, Remixed Reviews by Alex Martinez, also known as Shy Town Silent on YouTube. Um, you know, he's doing his videos, uh, trying to be consistent on a weekly basis, but he's got, uh, he's in the process of moving on up in life. Um, I'm not going to put it out there, but uh, We're moving on up. kudos to Alex, you know, so he's pumping out these videos as, as much as possible. Um, his latest one as of this recording is his uh, review on uh, last week's BotCon. Bot-Con. So uh, make sure to check that out as well as his previous reviews for a lot of uh, check really out awesome old episodes figures. of the Spinner Rack. Yes, old episodes of the Spinner Rack issues issues one through fifty are, uh, are up on YouTube. It's one through forty four. Is it? Mm-hmm. I thought we started up with this one with issue fifty. No, no, it was forty five. Oh, okay, so one through forty four. Excuse me. Yeah. That's why Brian's in charge of the Spinner Rack. <laughs> now let's get to Modicon. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next week.